Hello all, so in this video, we're gonna talk through this idea of what a Taylor series is. Now, hopefully you kind of have a concept behind what a series is. Um, so a series is just essentially, what happens if you take a sequence? Okay, so a sequence, remember, is just an ordered set. So a set is just a collection of objects, right? If you put those objects into some kind of order, so you put numbers into an order, then you end up adding that sequence together, then you end up with a series. Now, the idea of a Taylor series is to try and make calculus a little bit easier, particularly when you're dealing with awkward functions. So let's have a look at this then. I've drawn here two sets of functions. So a set of functions on the left and a set of functions on the right. Now, hopefully you notice that the set of functions on the left are something called a polynomial function. So hopefully you've heard of that word before. All a polynomial is, uh, so poly just means many, okay? Think of like polygon or polygamous, just means many, okay? And nomial just means named objects. So in this case, the named objects are terms, okay? So if you have a look at the first one, for example, it just means that I have many terms. So a 3x squared would be a term and a 5x would be a term, and I'm just adding them together, okay? So a term in this case, just a bit between the pluses and minus on the left-hand side, okay? Now, you look, and the ones on the right, the functions on the right, are slightly more awkward to deal with. So you can see here we've got cosine of x, we've got natural log of x, we've even got e to the x there. Now, admittedly, they're not disastrous to deal with, like we have got techniques to deal with them, um, but I'm gonna give them the name the non-polynomial functions, because they don't look like the things on the left, okay? Now, if you think about it, let me ask you this question. What is easier to differentiate? So let's suppose we have a situation, I don't know, it could be dealing with population growth or it could be dealing with um, money in a bank account. And I wanna work out what is the rate of change? In other words, how quickly is something changing? Um, and I may particularly wanna work out things like stationary points, so where does it reach its maximum? Where does it reach its minimum? Now, in order to do that, I need to be able to apply differentiation there. Now, hopefully you realize that all of the functions on the left, on the right, we can differentiate, so the non-polynomial functions. We have got techniques to differentiate them. But if I ask you the question, which set of functions is easier to differentiate, the ones on the left, the polynomial functions, or the ones on the right, the non-polynomial functions, hopefully you'll all say the ones on the left, okay? The polynomial functions are much easier to differentiate. And particularly when it comes to working out stationary points, you know, maximum, minimums, you have to do the second derivative to work out the nature of the stationary point, the ones on the left are gonna be much, much easier to work with. So the thing is with Taylor series, he kind of looked at this and said, hmm, I wonder if I can convert or I can approximate in some way the ones on the right, the non-polynomial functions, and make them look something like the ones on the left, make them look something like the polynomial functions. So this is the whole idea of a Taylor series. It's a way of approximating non-polynomial functions to make them look like polynomial functions. Okay, so the question is how? Well, just to be clear, what I'm trying to do Okay, I'm gonna do an actual example here. So I'm gonna take f of x equals e to the power of two x. That's my function, okay? And what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and approximate this um, into a polynomial function. So I'm gonna try and make it look something like, uh, well, a value, so that's just like three or seven or five or whatever. I'm just gonna call it c naught, so constant naught, okay? Plus another value, so c one times x, plus another value times x squared, plus another value times x cubed, etc., etc., etc. And this will go on in the same way forever and ever and ever. Okay, so I'm trying to make this thing, the e to the power of two x, look like this. Now clearly I need a starting point. Okay, so I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna approximate it around x equals zero. Now, um, Clearly, as I consider more terms in my sequence, I will get a better approximation, and we'll talk about how we can do that in just a second. Um, but I will also talk about, at the end, how we can approximate this, uh, this polynomial around different points. So at the moment, I've just chosen x equals zero for ease, and you will see that it comes out really easily, or much easier. But we will also talk about how we can adapt this idea so that we can deal with it around different points. So we can say, for example, let's start off around x equals 10, or x equals negative three. It doesn't matter, okay? So this is the idea. I'm taking e to the power of two x, and I'm trying to make it look like a polynomial function. Well, really, all I need to do is just work out what these values of constants are. Because once I've got this, once I've got the values of the constants, the only thing that separates different polynomials from each other is the value of the constants. Like every polynomial will follow this form. So it'll start off with like x to the power of zero, then x to the power of one, then x to the power of two, x to the power of three. That's what's gonna be in each of the terms, but it's just the constant values that will change each time. So that's my job. 
I need to find a way of working out what those constant values are. So you can see down here, I've drawn out a little table. Okay, so first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Jojibra, uh, and if you have never met Jojibra, Jojibra is brilliant, it's completely free, uh, I strongly recommend that you go and have a look at this. Okay, um, we're going to look for the graph, or we're trying to approximate e to the power of 2x. So what I'm just simply going to do on the left hand side, over here in the input bar, is just type in e to the power of 2x and then hit enter. In actual fact, I'm just going to change the colour of this graph slightly, so I'm just going to right click, go to settings, and I'm just going to go over here to colour and I'm just going to change it to black because this is the colour, this is the graph which I want to approximate around. So I'm going to keep this in black, okay? E to the power of 2x, okay? And in fact, I might make that a little bit bolder as well. So just go to settings again and I'm just going to go to style and I'm just going to change the like, line thickness to something a little bit thicker, okay? So this is the graph that I'm trying to approximate, e to the power of 2x, okay? Well, fairly obviously if it's going to be any good approximation so remember i'm doing this around x equals zero and we'll talk about how we can use different x values which you approximate around later if i want this to be any good approximation so in other words if i want this thing to look anything like this thing okay so my true function or my approximate function they need to have the same value at the point x equals zero so if i stick in x equals zero they should have the same value otherwise it's going to be a rubbish approximation so in other words i need to make sure that when I stick in x equals zero to my f of x, my true function, that's gotta be the same as sticking in uh, x equals zero to my approximate function, okay, g of x, okay? So the way which I do that is just simply sticking in zero into my true function. So that comes e to the power of two times zero, which of course just e to the power of zero, or just one, okay? I'm basically saying that should be the same if I stick it into my approximate function, okay? So in other words, if I stick it into g of x, okay? So if I stick in g of zero, well, let's see what we get, okay? So at the moment, I don't know the value of any of these constants. So at the moment, I've just got c0 plus c1 times x plus c2 times x squared, etc., etc., etc. okay? But what I'm doing is sticking in x equals zero into this function. So in other words, whenever I see a z x, I'm just gonna replace it with zero. So I get zero here. And in fact, are you happy that every single term after c0, after that constant term, will always have an x in? So if I'm sticking in x equals zero, all of those terms are just going to go to zero, okay? All those terms are just going to go to zero. So in other words, what I'm saying is that the value of my approximation function at the point x equals zero should just be whatever the value of c naught is, because all the other terms are just going to go to zero, because they've got an x in, okay? Now remember that I said, I said that if I want this to be a good approximation, okay, the value of my approximation function should be the same as the true value of my function at the point x equals zero. Okay, so look here, the value of my approximation function x equals zero is c naught, and the value of my true function x equals zero is one. So in other words, I can say that the value of c naught for e to the power of two x, if I want to approximate it as a polynomial, should be equal to one. Okay, and remember how I got that, I just simply said that c naught should be exactly the same as whatever the true value of my function is at the point x equals zero. Okay. So, hopefully that makes sense. Let's just see this plotted on GeoGebra, because I think GeoGebra is a really nice way of plotting it. So I'm just gonna plot the graph, okay? So this is gonna be my first approximation. So I'm gonna call it G1, okay? So G underscore one, okay, of X will be equal to, and I said it was equal to C naught, which is just one, okay? So you can see there in red that I've got the appro first approximation of my function. Not a very good one, but the only characteristic which I'm interested in at this stage is that the value of my function at the point x equals zero is the same on both my approximation and my true function, which it is, okay? So, so far, this is what I want. 